It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And we are in Coronado again at a client's. We are going to be doing an installation in the backyard, but I wanted to show you what we did out here in the front last December. So it's been about 13 or 14 months since this all went in and it has not seen clippers in 13 or 14 months. And it is absolutely spectacular. I will be including a maintenance as part of our installation time this, this go round. But before we dove in, I wanted to show you these cutouts are about five feet, five foot squares. And the client has lived here for just oodles and oodles of years and could never figure out these cutouts. Nothing ever worked. Nothing ever was sustainable. Nothing ever looked good. I mean, hello, I have, what I did is I brought in soil and I mounded, of course. Then we staged some one foot minus honey court boulders on both sides in strategic places. Then I planted aloe granadiensis. I love aloe granadiensis. This is a clumping aloe. It is so tough and so fantastic and so easy to manipulate. And it is the thriller. I just consider any, particularly spaces this size that are just, you know, five foot by five. This is like a big pot in my, in my mind. So the Granadiensis went in. Then I flanked it here with an Aloe Cameronii. I've got some Crassula Argentea and some Undulata uh, stuck in there. I have Portolacaria afro variegata, but the real, you know, showstopper is this Echeveria giboflora hybrid. It's a crenunculated Echeveria. I'm not sure exactly what variety it is, but look at the bloom out on this. I have never seen so much action. Now, I would have had I been here a few months ago, I would have trimmed these blooms off sooner because they do draw energy away from the mother plant and can theoretically shorten the lifetime of the plant. Um, but we're going to get all this cleaned up and get her exposed. Oh my goodness. And then over here, same thing. Soil, mounding, boulders. Then, you know, being mindful of space and scale. You know, this is, this is really important. You want to put things in that aren't going to take over the planet. So this is another Euphorbia trigona. It's a, one of the rubras, the reds. Uh, this has the potential over time to get massive, but we won't let it, will we? We talked about this. We are the daddy. The daddy is not the plant. You are the daddy. So when this gets to be too big, we're gonna dig it out, cut it up, reset it, and get on with life have a lot of the usual suspects, but look at how great they all mesh together. I've got cotyledon and mangaves and jades. Here's a neat combo, Crassula argentea sunset and one of the Crassula uh, lemon and lime or variegates. Lovely contrast. Uh, barrel cactus is kind of starting to get a little hidden there, so we'll, uh, we'll expose that. More of the portolacaria, and this is this is um, Southwest Brown, three quarter inch, and I topped it with black three quarter inch lava. Love, love that combination. That is a winner, winner. Um, over here we've got uh, Agave um, Quadricolor, Lafantha Quadricolor, and she is a voracious pupper. Look at all of her babies. Oh my gosh, Hannah, look, somebody dropped their gum. How rude, sacrilege. Um, anywho, so the pups are really, really easy to manipulate. See, look at that. So what we'll do is we'll cut it right here. Well, I got my clippers, cut it right here. And then I can reset this pup literally anywhere I want. And I'll probably collect all of these pups and move them into other areas of the garden because I think one here is sufficient. The Euphorbia milii ready red. I love this plant. It blooms literally 12 months out of the year. It is giving a spectacular pop of color right there. The Ruchia also um, 
don't always have luck with this plant. I love it. It is a tough leathery ground cover, but uh, sometimes in some installations it tanks, not here. Everywhere I put this, it is thriving. And this blue, um, blue elf, aloe blue elf is spectacular. Opalina, Morganodiensis. These cotyledon, uh, many of these inside the courtyard we're gonna dig up and reset. Really tough leathery plant and very, very easy to manipulate. So yeah, I am absolutely over the moon. This looks amazing. The client is thrilled and yeah. So uh, I hope this helps. I hope that you're inspired and I hope that you will get out in your garden and make it go. This has been Laura Eubanks reporting from Coronado, California with your succulent tip of the day.